What's up guys? Murphy Farms Training here. We've got a flint. This is a flint from a flint lock. It is in the vise. It's a little dull. It's not exceptionally dull, but it's a little dull. Uh, was shooting it the other day. I uh, was throwing some good sparks and all, but I'm going to use it for hunting season. And I want to make sure it's good and sharp and throws a lot of sparks. Because the worst thing in the world you can do is have a flint not spark if you're hunting. So, um, you know, when you're at the range, it doesn't matter. And the uh, worst thing I've ever heard with a flint lock is someone once told me, they, they said, oh, yeah, my flint was uh, not sparking, so I threw it away. Um, you can sharpen these things multiple times, and I'm going to show you how. It's really, really easy. So all I did was took a nail. Okay, so here's a nail. If I can get the camera to focus on it. I took a nail, and I filed it with this exact profile right here. Okay, so you see I've got this sharp, sharp shoulder, and I've flattened the end. So the sharp shoulder, and I've flattened the end. And I'll show you, I'll hold this in just so you can see there's a head still on it and all of that. But uh, basically got this 90 degree shoulder, slightly, um, slightly downhill, and then a sharp shoulder up. And all I did was do that with a flat file. And I'm going to show you how to sharpen a flint. And the easiest way to do it is to put that profile along the edge of the flint like that. Or like that, depending on what you need to chip off. And try to chip off little pieces. So I'm going to do this right now on camera. And this, this guy has a thick, thick bevel on this side. And this side, I mean, it just comes down and comes all the way to the edge. And so if I can get rid of this bevel here... I have a nice sharp flint, and that's how I know to do it on this edge. And I just put it here, and if I can keep from dropping my nail. And I've got this little bitty claw hammer. It was a gift from somebody. And I find it works really well for this. And you'll tap, and you'll see these little pieces come off sometimes. Okay? Sometimes you got to hold it up against there with your thumb. Makes it hard for people to see what you're doing there. But you got to hold it up against there and then give it a tap. And just be patient. Um, you don't want to take a big hunk off. You just want to chip off tiny, tiny little pieces. And the best way I've found to do it is, like I said, to set that up against the flint and hold it. And then just give a little, just a little tap. And you'll get little pieces chip off. And what you're feeling for is, does it feel sharp? Um, maybe even a little jagged. Um, and, and it's amazing how little you have to break off for this thing to get sharp. And every now and then, because flint is very, very hard, I actually have to dress my tool. And I think I'm almost to that point. So I'll show you how I do that. I just put my flat file in here. And you see my flat file has a cutting edge. And I just put it there. And I push it across. And what I'm trying to do is make sure that that edge right there, okay, that edge is nice and sharp. It's a 90 degree angle. And I'll just take that file and I'll go across my tool. I'm a little zoomed in for this. And usually I'd set it on a table. I'm trying to do it in front of you guys. It does make it a whole lot harder. But anyway... You're just going to sit here and just tap. And sometimes you'll even hear a big piece break off. You'll see a big piece break off. So that's taking a big bite right there. You can feel it when you, when you tap it and it doesn't give. There's a, it's taking a big bite. And we don't want to take a big bite. Um, and we can try going this way and see if we can get the edge to dress this way. You'll hear it. Listen to it. You'll hear it. You'll hear it chip. There it goes. So if you heard that, it's a big crack sound. You be careful not to take too much. Okay? Be careful not to take too much. Um, and it is possible to have too much of a lip on this nail. Okay? It is possible to have too much of a lip on this nail. And if you have too much of a lip on the nail, I just dropped it and i got to go get it out of the floor. Um, it will take too big of a bite, 
and so eventually this thing will will get kind of beat up and I'll just uh, cut it off and start over or I'll get a new nail and what I'm doing is just going back and forth and I'm chipping little pieces off there we go and I'm looking for this thing to kind of be jagged to be honest with you um, and you'll feel it I mean it'll feel like if you run your finger across it it'll cut you um, and it's pretty, it's sharper than it was when I put it in the vise. If I, if I ran my finger lengthways across it, it would probably be close to bringing blood now. And folks are worried. They worry about not getting this straight. Um, truth is, your frizzing is quite hard on your flintlocks. And so if you, if you get this a little crooked... It will usually, and you try to put it as square to the frizzing face as you can when you mount it in the gun. And that's pretty good. That's that's pretty happy. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty sharp. And so, but if when you mount this to the gun, you want this to be as square to the frizzing as possible. Um, but if there's a little corner sticking out or whatever, it will sort itself out. Um, it will sort itself out, I promise you. That's really nice. And uh, and sometimes you just can't get what you want. And, and you can tap and tap and tap all night. And um, sometimes flints just break in the direction they want to break in. Um, I have found that out the hard way. So, But, you know, you, you kind of sit and tap on this until you're happy with it, until you get it where you want it. And then... Um, and then go put it in your gun. And what I will typically do is I typically have three or four flints in my bag. And I have a space for a flint that is broken or dulled. And so if I get one that breaks, I will practice this with the broken flint. And if I get one that is dull, the worst thing I can do is try to sharpen it and break it. So if you're like my friend... And you were throwing all your flints away. You uh, you end up with uh, one use items here. So I'm going to try and show you that edge, and you'll see it's got some teeth to it. Uh, it's it's jagged, but you'll put that as square as you can to the frizzen edge. It's pretty sharp feeling. Uh, it will make a very nice spark, um, and you can mount it up like this, or down like that okay doesn't matter you want it to hit as high on the frizzing as possible and i say as high as possible you don't hit the very top of the frizzing but you want to be about in the middle third of the frizzing when you hit so whichever your which whichever way your lock geometry works best so but anyway that's how you sharpen a frizzing or excuse me sharpen a flint and uh like i said it's just this little little tool here so and uh it works pretty well you'll see some some remnants of uh you might see some remnants of flint on there, and you'll see that thing gets pretty rough um, after a few uses. And you just got to kind of keep dressing it up and trying to use it. And, but anyway, so if you've got a flint lock, if you're interested in a flint lock, you can reuse these. The worst thing that's going to happen, guys, is you try to sharpen it, you break the snot out of it, and you replace it anyway. The best thing that's going to happen is you get, uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 more shots out of this flint before you need to nap it again. So... If you have questions, uh, leave them in the comments. I hope it helps. And uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.